As you stand in the middle of McCoy Park, drive down 24 a highway, play at the tennis courts on InBest Truman Parkway, it is easy to forget the neck ever existed. The neck was known in the 1960s as a village, a community, and a safe place for many African Americans that lived in independence. I did not know why it was called the neck either. And in my book, in several, uh, in several speeches I gave talks, I talked about maybe it was referred to as like the neck of the woods. Since then, I have learned that it was actually called, and I see this in an article from the Jackson County Historical Society, it was referred to as nigger neck. And the poor whites that lived south of, uh, in South Independence, that area was called Cracker Neck, and there is still a Cracker Neck area. We were a village, uh, like they just said. We, we played together, worked together. Uh, anyone could discipline you if they needed to, and the only thing they had to say, you better stop that, I'm gonna tell your, your parents. We played right in our neighborhood because we had the room and stuff to play. It used to be Slover's Park. We used to, we used to picnic in Slover's Park. When they built that, it's just like, oh man, that took away Slover's Park first, and then Truman Library come about. I remember seeing Desi Arness and Lucille Ball when they was dedicating Truman Library. And it was a neighborhood of mostly families, uh, relatives of each other. We were all kind of intertwined somehow, uh, and it was, uh, for me at the time, it was a nice place to live. We used to have to walk all the way over on Spring to catch the bus, if there was a bus. And that's quite a ways. But most of the times we walked to school from where I lived at 912 North McCoy all the way over on Dodging. There was a big old lot across the street from where I lived. It was huge. So we would gather, play ball, or there was another big lot over near them. So we had a lot of good, good friends in the neighborhood. Our street was the gathering street. They, uh, Mill Street and St. Charles and College and all, and McCoy, they would come on Nettleton and they would uh, play from sun up to sundown. We were like this, we bonded. We didn't have a choice at the time. Roxanne, Angela, Nancy, Ricky, we're all kin in some fashion. And we just had a ball. And my grandmother's steps was the steps that everybody sat on and we played in the middle of the street in front of her, uh, her steps because it was the light was there, the street light was there. And we did everything until the whistle blew when the whistle blew, everybody scattered like ants. Zoom! Had to be in the house before uh, the whistle stopped or you was in trouble. Urban renewal is the process of seizing and demolishing large swaths of private and public property for the purpose of modernizing and improving aging infrastructure. Between 1949 and 1974, the federal government gave cities billions of dollars to tear down blighted areas and to replace them with affordable housing. The U.S. government underwrote this process through a Department of Housing and Urban Development grant and loan program. The neck would be my place of abode in a somewhat shabby home on a tarred and graveled road. Thinking about growing up in the neck brings a smile to my face, for there were nurturing mamas and aunts all over the place. Love, respect, and caring abounded everywhere. By uh, being brought up right, being having good morals and virtues down there in my neighborhood. And I learned to love myself and be proud of what I did have. And uh, was able, when integration came in, you know, I was able to speak and communicate on the level with the, the white children that I went to school with. And, and um, having that as a, a past um, just really, I think, made me stronger and I knew there was a better time. Like so, we had uh, old time neighborhood. We, we, my brother, uh, they made a swing out of an old tar, and, you know, and everything like that. And um, 
you know, like I said, we just played and, and just had a, you know, good time. I remember the Manor Man bread used to come in our neighborhood. And, uh, that was a treat because my mom was such a good cook, but every once in a while we would, would buy some, something off the Manor Man truck or the ice cream truck. The neck was targeted for removal. In the mid-1950s, the construction began on Truman Library. To those living in the small, predominantly African-American community, life would soon change. In city halls across the nation, programs created from a predominantly white male perspective were effective at removing what they considered to be blight. As a result, under the guise of urban renewal, many communities, including the neck, were removed. Urban renewal raised its angry hand moving and splitting black families all over the land. We all had to move out of the neck like a flashing spark. Independents had to make way for the much needed McCoy Park. Certainly, the prices offered some were quite meager, but there was no choice for the city was eager. Then the bulldozers rushed in, piling the neck in a heap. Some people shouted for joy, others would sit and weep. An all American city was the plot of this story leaving many neck families deep in debt and full of worry. And if you stood on the portico, the front porch of the Truman Library and looked uh, south, right across 24 Highway, there was the neck. And truly, the neck was an eyesore, you know, and uh, there were some houses that were just not what any world dignitaries would want to see if they came to the library. So uh, some of us still refer to it as urban removal. Once Truman Library was built and we lived right in the sandwich of the library, our neighborhood, and not too far from um, Best Truman's home. So we was forced, like I said, forced to move. I was drafted in the army. And when I came back, the neck was gone. It was nothing, it looked like a bomb had hit it. But when I left, there was houses. We were happy just the way we were. And if any of the other people wanted to come in, they were welcome. We was born not to be prejudiced at all. And that's how I like it. Not all stories about our past are happy, cheerful, or nostalgic. What began as a program to remove blight ultimately displaced families who were not in a position to respond. By studying our past, we can learn how to build resilient communities where the individuals within them can become stronger together. As we end another Black History Month, let us strive to better care for, learn from, challenge, and love one another.